Today, I'm testing a USB 4 NVMe drive enclosure with the M1 Max MacBook Pro. And this should be interesting because so far we've seen pretty mixed USB performance from Apple's M1 machines when using USB 3 devices. So how will this USB 4 enclosure fare? There's a lot of confusion between USB and Thunderbolt, so it might be helpful for us to get just a little bit of background first. And if you're familiar with USB and Thunderbolt standards, well then skip ahead a little. These two different standards can be quite confusing because USB 3 and 4, along with Thunderbolt 3 and 4, all use this Type-C connector. And that's often referred to as a USB-C connector, just to further confuse matters. But these standards are not the same. Let's take an example. A USB 3 device will work on a computer that has Thunderbolt 3 ports. But the reverse is not true. You can't plug a Thunderbolt 3 device into a computer that only has USB 3. And this is where USB 4 comes in, because it actually incorporates Thunderbolt 3 as part of its standard. So USB 4 and Thunderbolt 3 are, to some extent, interchangeable. And you get that faster bandwidth that Thunderbolt offers of 40 gigabits per second. Now remember that's USB 4 incorporates Thunderbolt 3. Sometimes USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 are confused with each other. Uh, but Thunderbolt 4 is actually a stricter version of Thunderbolt 3. It's got the same speed, 40 gigabits per second, as Thunderbolt 3 has. But there are a number of additional requirements behind the scenes that mean that actually some external devices are likely to be faster over Thunderbolt 4 than they are over Thunderbolt 3. The original M1 machines don't comply with these additional requirements that come under Thunderbolt 4, and that's why the ports are described as USB 4. In contrast, though, the M1 Pro and M1 Max machines do have Thunderbolt 4 compatibility. In previous tests, we've shown that the original M1 machines lag considerably behind Intel machines, that's Intel Macs and PCs, when it comes to USB 3 speeds for external drives. The M1 Pro and M1 Max machines, however, have got better USB 3 performance, although it's still not as good as you'll find on equivalent PCs and Intel Macs. So this is why I'm interested to see whether a USB 4 drive will offer decent performance. What can we expect? Uh, the original M1 Max, well, they have USB 4 ports, and these new Macs, well, they have Thunderbolt 4 ports. So we should be able to get maximum performance from this enclosure. Oracle sent this one over for me to test without any charge, uh, but as always, I only accept it on the basis that I'm free to give an honest opinion and I retain full editorial control. Now, this is the M2 V01-C4 model, catchy name, finished in this nice uh, blue-grey aluminium, and it claims full support for USB 4 with that 40 gigabit transmission rate. Orico say that it should deliver sequential read performance of 2700 megabytes per second and sequential write performance at 1400. Uh, though that of course will depend on the drive that you choose to put inside the enclosure. Now in the box we get the enclosure itself. A type A to type C USB 3 cable. A type C to type C USB 4 cable. An M.2 retaining screw. A Torx driver. Some manuals. And a thermal pad. The enclosure is opened by removing one Torx screw, which is quite stiff. Uh, but once open, we can install an M.2 NVMe drive. And I'm using this Western Digital Black SN750 500 gigabyte model. Uh, we simply secure the SSD with the retaining screw using the same Torx T5 screwdriver. The thermal pad sticks to the SSD and provides conductivity to the enclosure, which has got this nice sort of heatsink design on it. And that's because SSDs get hot really quickly, especially when they're running at full speed. And once they get hot, they will start to throttle their speed. Uh, this enclosure is made out of solid metal, and it feels of an appropriate size that it should be able to keep those temperatures under control. Uh, but there's no denying that it will get warm in use. Uh, the quality looks good. And at one end, we've got the Type-C port and an activity LED. The supplied cable is quite short, but of course you can use any Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or USB 4 cable with it. It will also work with USB 3 cables, but the speeds might reduce. I tested this enclosure with a couple of my high-quality Thunderbolt cables uh, to check that the included cable performs properly, and I'm pleased to say that it does. There's a key benefit to USB 4 over Thunderbolt 3 enclosures. 
Uh, because USB 4 incorporates that Thunderbolt 3 standard, but is also backwards compatible with USB, it means that you can use this on any computer, whether it has Thunderbolt or USB. The only thing that changes is the speed. Uh, pricing for this enclosure, by the way, on Amazon is $170 or £150, and I've popped some links in the description if you want to pick one of these up for yourself. So let's test the speed using Blackmagic Disk Speed Test on my M1 Mac Mini. And we're seeing 1350 megabytes per second on write, and 2,729 on read. Uh, so that's pretty much bang on Oracle's claims for this enclosure, and represents very usable performance indeed. I think M1 Mac owners would be very pleased with that. But the numbers will vary between each test that we do, and it depends how hot the drive gets. So I allowed it to cool down between each test, and what I'm presenting here is the average of a number of runs. And remember, my focus in this video is on the maximum performance of the ports, uh, those on the Mac and the one on this enclosure. The actual speed of the device will depend on the SSD that you choose to put inside. So I'm not gonna do any deep dive testing in this video. But you should certainly expect that what we're showing you are maximum speeds, and you'll probably find that they're a little bit slower in real world usage. So let's run the same test now on the M1 Max. And we can see quite an increase in write speed, 2135 megabytes per second and 2747 on read. So the read performance is pretty much the same as the M1 Mac Mini within a margin of error, but those write speeds are significantly higher on the M1 Max compared to the original M1. And I repeated the test several times and with different cables and this is the result. So how come the write performance is so much higher than Orico's claim? Well, maybe they're just being conservative. How does it compare though to a PC? I ran the same test on my Razer Blade notebook which has Thunderbolt 4 ports, just like the M1 Max. And we got 1953 megabytes per second on write and 2420 on read. Again, I ran this test many times and that is just the result for the Razer Blade notebook. And other PC notebooks may fare differently depending on what chipsets they have inside. So I'm not for a moment suggesting that the M1 Max beats all PCs or anything like that. But I was also interested to see what the performance of this enclosure would be over USB 3, that backwards compatibility. So I plugged it into my ThinkStation, which doesn't have Thunderbolt, but does have 10 gigabit USB 3. Uh, performance is much as expected at 873 megabytes per second on write and 915 on read. And obviously that's a lot slower than the USB 4 performance, but isn't it great to have that backwards compatibility? And you'll also be able to connect it via a Type-A USB port with that second included cable, allowing you to run the drive on five gigabit USB and even older machines. I was also keen to see what would happen if I connected this drive via a dock. In this example, I'm using the Razer Thunderbolt 4 dock with my M1 Max, and we run the same test and we get 1608 megabytes per second on write, 2746 on read. So the dock isn't affecting read performance, but it is slowing down the write performance although in this case it's still faster than the M1 Mac Mini managed. And honestly, in real world usage, would you even be able to tell the difference? So the new M1 Pro and M1 Max machines continue to impress, and they do represent a genuine step up over the standard M1 when it comes to connectivity. It's been frustrating to see my USB SSDs run slower on these new machines than they do on my PCs and Intel Macs. So these results are a welcome change. Uh, USB 4 will become more common and prices will come down. And that's good news if your workflow involves external drives like these. Of course, Thunderbolt enclosures have always been available, but sometimes you need to share files with a machine that doesn't have Thunderbolt. And that's where USB 4 really fills the gap. When it comes to external drive enclosures, this Orico unit has really impressed me during the time I've been using it. It's got a genuinely nice build quality. It's a good size and it appears to work better than advertised. So it gets a thumbs up from me. And hopefully this video has been useful enough to earn a thumbs up from you. Don't forget also to optimize your YouTube algorithm by hitting the subscribe button. And I'll see you soon for some more geekery.